So, we just covered all the five-star games for the Super Nintendo. And if you watched the video, there was a lot of games missing from this list, right? So I figured, never mind that list, and yes, I agree to most of those being five-star games, but what about these games? Here are the real five-star games for the Super Nintendo. I'm trying to beat Konami in subscribers, so help me get there. Make sure you're subscribed. Yeah, that's right, we're taking back Konami. Too many pachinko games, let's bring it back to retro, right? And after watching this video, let me know in the comments which games are still missing from this list. I know you have several. The first one I want to talk about is Axley. I know it's funny, here I am talking about how I want to beat Konami and subscribers, and this is not the only Konami game on this video, by the way. My mind was blown the first time I saw this game, just how it looks, how it feels. Great vertical shooter at start, where you see things kind of coming in from the distance, and you have a few different weapons you can choose from, too. In later levels, you'll get weapon upgrades, so you can choose which levels might need different types of weaponry, which is kind of nice. But you start with the basic stuff, at least three basic shots here. Always loved how this game looked, how it felt. There's a difficult setting to this, but, you know, it's you can kind of play your way through it all the same. Now, if you get hurt or if you get hit or something like that, you might lose that weapon of whatever you have. So you might have to make sure that, you know, you're not going to not gonna take some damage during a time when you're going to lose the weapon you really like to use. Bosses in this game, well, you know, your typical standard fare of shooter bosses. Just like these big old creatures that take up most of the screen and got to avoid their shots and stuff like that. Nothing, nothing you haven't seen before, right? But not just that, but then you also have your standard issue horizontal shooting stages as well. And this is more familiar if you're into like Gradius, for instance, another Konami game, by the way. You know, things like R-Type and stuff like that too. So you get a little mix up of where it goes from like, you know, vertical stages to horizontal stages. Not the only game that's done this. We've seen that with Life Force before too. But Axley, come on, man. I mean, just the visuals and everything, I would have given this game a five star, I think. Everyone talks about Ghosts and Goblins or Super Ghouls and Ghosts on the Super Nintendo, but not enough talk about Demon's Crest and how much I absolutely loved Demon's Crest. Great music in this game, great graphics too. Some of my favorite graphics of any Super Nintendo game is found in Demon's Crest. I mean, <laughs> the very first battle you have is fighting a boss. You gotta love that. And you go through a little bit of the uh, side-scrolling platformer type stage too. And because you're playing as this demon brand here, uh, you, can, you can hover, you can float, you can also unlock different demons later on that can do other things too, like ones that can help you swim better, stuff like that, you know? It moves at a bit of a slower pace in this game, and you don't feel frustrated by it, by how this game is set up, by how the stages are set up. It's okay that you're not moving like super, super fast like you do in a lot of other maybe Super Nintendo platformers. You know, just the gameplay speed feels right. Could it be a little bit faster? I mean, I suppose so, but then you might end up, you know, getting hit more or you know, <laughs> might, might failing more. I don't know. Kind of nice too when you're choosing your stages because it's a little bit open world. You can kind of go where you want to go. Um, it's this overhead flight thing, which I love it when Super Nintendo games did this. Like, you know, like for games like Final Fantasy and stuff like that. I just thought it was the coolest thing ever. Demon's Crest, in my opinion, absolutely a five star game. EVO Search for Eden is one of those games, man, it, it runs for a pretty high price tag now if you're buying the, the actual copy of the game, but boy, is it worth it. Well, I mean, I don't know if it's worth it worth it, but you know what I mean. What a great idea for an RPG, like by every literal sense of the term. You start from pond scum. I mean, you start as a little fish, right? And then through experience and through battling the other creatures and everything, you can uh, evolve. That's what the whole game is about evolution. You start as a fish and you end up moving your way out and becoming a mammal. And then it kind of sp splits off. You can uh, choose to eventually become a human, or you can take the bird route and become a bird and, you know, upgrade that thing too. That happens much later in the game. But as you're just swimming around and biting and headbutting these creatures, you get your experience points and you can use that to upgrade yourself. Uh, maybe, uh, you know, a new tail to help you swim faster, maybe a horn. So when you ram into someone, uh, it'll take more damage or jaws or teeth, you know, will give you like, you know, nice teeth that will take more damage when you uh, bite enemies and stuff like that. I had so much fun with this game. It's a game I love to play through about every other year. Um, in fact, it's about high time I end up playing through this game again. So I might be doing that here soon on Twitch. EVO is one of those games, if you haven't checked it out yet, you got to check it out by whatever means you have of playing these classic Super Nintendo games. There's a lot of options out there. I was not super surprised that F-Zero didn't make this list, but I think if anything, uh, not only nostalgia glasses and everything, but it's also just kind of a fun racing game anyway. F-Zero, I think, definitely deserves to be a five-star game. I'm not a huge fan of racing games. 
I love F-Zero and still play it today. And my preferred version is this one on the Super Nintendo. The F-Zero for the 64, that was pretty fun. And then F-Zero on the Game Boy Advance, that's really, really fun too. But my preferred version is still the Super Nintendo version. I think it's great. You're just zipping through these tracks, you're moving super fast and everything like that. You know, you got your, your little speed boosters you can get later on. I love the uh, little platforms that you can regain your health. You know, I may not have done the best I've ever done in this playthrough when I captured my own footage. But again, like I said, still have fun playing this game today. Gotta love me some F-Zero. So in the other video, they said Final Fantasy 3 was a five-star game and not Final Fantasy 2, although Final Fantasy 2 did rank very high. I prefer Final Fantasy 2 over Final Fantasy 3 or Final Fantasy 4 over Final Fantasy 6, whatever whatever way you're more comfortable with. I personally just thought it was a better story. Um, I liked some of the characters in this game as well. And again, Final Fantasy 3 is fantastic. I love that game too. But I just loved everything about Final Fantasy 2 better. Ah, the, the soundtrack, I mean, both of them have great soundtracks. It's hard to justify one or the other. But Final Fantasy 3... Five-star game. I also think Final Fantasy 2 is 100% a five-star game. I just love it. And I'm not even a huge RPG fan, but love this game. Legend of the Mystical Ninja, if there was ever a five-star game on the Super Nintendo, Legend of the Mystical Ninja would be the five-starriest. It has cutscenes with giant animations, giant characters, a little comedy involved as well to let you know that everything's, you know, just, you know, tongue-in-cheek fun. And this was my introduction to Goemon, probably many others in the United States as well. Uh, the Goemon games have been around, there's one in the arcade, uh, there were a couple for the Famicom. We got this one for the Super Nintendo. They had like five of them in Japan. I think they literally had four games like this, including this one. Um, and then there was like a Goemon board game or something like that, I don't know. But man, I would have loved to have seen the other Goemon games come out in the US. I mean, they have been translated, but you know, as far as Nin Super Nintendo, nothing to do with Super Famicom, Legend of the Nintendo Called Ninja uh, is another game I love just playing through when I can. It's been a while for myself. Love that it has these side-scrolling platforming stages, but then it has kind of the overworld-ish uh, when you're in the towns uh, talking to people or you can buy your upgrades and stuff like that. Admittedly, I didn't do a whole lot of buying stuff in shops. I just went through the stages and, you know, did the best I could. But there is that carnival stage later on where you can literally play like Gradius, like the first stage and stuff like that too. That blew my mind. I was like, oh man, more games should have this. Of course, nowadays we have just them coming out with compilation collections, but still, Legend of the Mystical Ninja, definitely one of my favorite games. I was thinking about Mario Paint and how much hours I put into Mario Paint, how much time I put into Mario Paint, how much my friends and I were just giggling and laughing at the stuff we drew, at the stuff we animated, at the music we composed with Mario Paint. Now this is just the little demo screen. I'm, I'm capturing this with a mister, so I don't have a, a mouse set up or anything like that. So, But Mario Paint, I mean, again, I was like, well, is Mario Paint a game or is it an application? I, it's hard to say one way or another. Um, but they put SimCity as a five-star game. And although SimCity is 100% a video game, it's also, I don't know, like that style of game, I guess, you know, to me and my thinking, if SimCity can be a five-star game, I think Mario Paint can be a five-star game because you play it the way you want to play it. There's no set guidelines or laws or rules that you have to do with a certain thing a certain way or a certain whatever. You just play the game. Pilot Wings, I think, should have deserved a five-star rating as well, especially for its innovation for when it came out because you have the uh, the Mode 7. This game, is, I mean, you talk about what games have Mode 7. This game is almost all Mode 7. <laughs> <laughs> as you're flying around, or the parachuting. I remember first seeing screenshots of this game, and I couldn't wrap my head around how the game would look in real life until I saw Super Nintendo in action with the Mode 7 and playing this game. And the first time you see the parachute, uh, you know, the guy going like up, 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 up to see the whole platform. I would love it if they made a new Pilot Wings game. I mean, they had we had Pilot Wings on the uh, on the 64. That was fun. We had Pilot Wings on the 3DS as well. That was pretty cool. But I mean, I just love Pilot Wings, and I I, I would love to see a new version on Switch and stuff like that too. Only four modes with the light plane and the hang glider and stuff like that too. But you also have the chance of bonus stages too. You can. And I have through save states and stuff like that. If you get enough of those bonus stages, you can beat this game without ever flying the light plane. I might want to challenge that use uh, that sometime in the future. Super Mario Kart didn't make it as a five-star game, huh? Well, I mean, maybe not everyone would agree, uh, but I, however, think that Mario Kart should be 
a five-star game for several reasons. I mean, it was so fun just to play with friends. It was one of those that had the perfect split screen uh, and the way the stages and the behind the view was set up. It wasn't like an annoying split screen. You know, sometimes there's like a split screen, but then you end up losing half of your play field. Well, it doesn't really matter with uh, Mario Kart because of just how the angle is. You, you, you don't miss anything uh, as you're playing with two players. And if you're playing one player, then you get the map at the bottom, which is kind of cool. This was really, I mean, we have so many other kart racing games now from other companies. And this is the one I think that just started it all. Now we've had other driving games and racing games where you use weapons and stuff like that. That's happened. I mean, RC Pro-Am, we had that on the NES. We had, you know, games like, you know, Rock and Roll Racing for the Super Nintendo, which was fantastic. Love that game too. But this game was just done so brilliantly well that, I mean, it's the reason why people still play it today. And I mean, there's, there's so many of them now. And they're still adding new tracks to the one that came out several years ago. People ain't done playing this game, not by a long shot. Oh, you're not gonna put Mario RPG as a five-star game? Well, I mean, I think I would. Anytime that Nintendo can team up with Square is bound to be magic. You'd think, you'd hope, you'd wish. And it came out during that time when kind of that claymation, you know, like, you know, Donkey Kong Country, that style of art uh, for a video game uh, was kind of cool. It was new, and uh, but still something a little bit different. So it was kind of cool that we uh, saw that too. And then again, like if you're like me, not the biggest JRPG fan, it still gave you a little bit of something to do in those battles. Now, the turn-based still, me, then you, then me, then you, but there's still that timing element where if you hit your button at the right time, you can shield a little bit better, you can attack a little bit stronger, Fun idea for a game too, and also, I mean, Bowser, like most of the time, like most villains, misunderstood. You could actually play as Bowser in this game. That was a huge thing for the time. Like, oh, you can play as the bad guy? Well, he's not really the bad guy in this one. He's, you know, again, misunderstood. <laughs> Super Mario RPG, I think 100% needs to be a five-star game. MNT4 Turtles in Time. This was not a five star game. This is a five star game by today's standards. Now, Turtles the Arcade Game was fantastic, and this game was an arcade game as well. I've never seen, I, I mean, I have now, but when I was growing up, when this game came out, I never saw it in any arcade, um, any of the arcades I went to anyway. So, I mean, I thought this was a Super Nintendo game, not realizing it was a port from an arcade game, but that's fine by me because it didn't matter to me. <laughs> it's still a completely awesome game. It was just the best era for uh, these type of arcade games and everything, too. So happy to see Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Time come to the Super Nintendo um, and just and just rock it. Just really. It's another one of those, you know, two player simultaneous games. A lot of levels in this game, too. A whole bunch of levels. And it's a game that people are still playing today because, hey, why not? It's an awesome game. Not everyone would agree. I would put you in Squadron as a five star game as well. Not just because of the nostalgia goggles, but because it did something that a lot of shooters didn't do, which is kind of give it uh, a more... Well, it, it did a few things. It did a few things, which I'm really happy about. And it's, it's a, something that I wish more shooters would do today. So your health bar is an interesting style of health bar, where if you get hit, then it's like you, you better not get hit again, because you might just lose it all. But it, it kind of goes back a little bit. You got, you know, it gives you a little bit more of a breather. It's, you know, it's like, hey, warning, warning. <laughs> What's going on here? Uh, you do have special attacks and special powers, but instead of it just being like, the, here's your three bombs per stage or per life or whatever, um, you can purchase, with the money you earn, you can purchase different attacks, different weapons, different things like that. Especially, and different planes, different jets later on in the game too. Very cool anime look to it. I mean, Area 88 from, you know, that's, that's an anime, right? Or manga at least. Um, and a little bit where you can choose where you want to go as well. I'm doing terrible in this playthrough, by, by the way. Uh, but you can also like, you know, select which area you want to go to. It's like, oh, maybe not that one, but I'll go back to this one. I'll come back to that one later when I have a better plane or better, you know, uh, better something or other. Super, super fun game. I could go on and on. But you and Squadron, I think, for several reasons, should be a five-star game, in my opinion. Believe it or not, okay, so Zombies Ate My Neighbors, I I thought about putting it, I mean, I, I captured this footage anyway, I'm going to add it to this video. I, I grabbed the footage because I was like, I don't know if I would put it as a five-star game, but there's a lot of reasons why it could and should be a five-star game. Because it's great as a two-player, you got to have those love, love those couch co-op two-player games. It's fun, it's quirky, there was not a lot of games at the time that featured fun spook. 
You know what I mean? I mean, there's a lot of games that featured, like, you know, just blood and guts for no reason. You know, Splatterhouse comes to mind. It just looks gruesome, right? But there's not a lot of games that were just, you know, featuring just, you know, fun zombies and fun, you know, creepy things and stuff like that. You, you, it's okay to be fun without without having all the gruesomeness to it, too. And this game did a lot of that. And again, with the two players simultaneous and the couch co-op, uh, and you're just rescuing, uh, you know, the, the hapless souls who happen to be there, like the baby, like, uh, like you know, the, the, t the teacher... <laughs> See, all stuff like that. Like, you know, the civilians, the, the citizens of this town. Um, it just made it for kind of fun. So, I mean, I think, you know, the more I think about it, I think I would put this as a five-star game. And, and what do you think? You know, let me know in the comments. No, I, I think for a lot of reasons, I think Zombies Ate My Neighbors is definitely a five-star game. <laughs> WCW Super Brawl Wrestling is not a five-star game. But you know what is? You are for watching this video all the way through the end. I did another video on the five-star Super Nintendo games. You can check that out. And I have more one-star and five-star for Nintendo Super Nintendo Genesis TurboGrafx-16 Game Boy, etc. coming soon. Subscribe if you will. I'd appreciate it. And make sure you follow me on Twitch because I want to play through some of these on my Twitch stream here coming up very soon.